Howdy folks, I'm Triumphant Thorium, terrifyingly throwing tumultuous thunderbolts. I'm Megan. And here are more tumultuous thunderbolts for us to terrifyingly throw. And folks, before I forget, we have a live stream coming up tomorrow. So for more information, see the end of the video. Let's get started. All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for telling my sister-in-law that she should cancel the baby shower that she was planning for me and that I would prefer not to have one than have one where she doesn't respect my boundaries? My husband and I are expecting our first baby in a few months, and my sister-in-law wanted to throw us a baby shower. I was really in love with the idea and accepted, and then my mother-in-law got involved. But my sister-in-law disrespected the one clear boundary regarding the baby shower that I had, and she refused to let it go despite being told not to, not only by me, but my mother-in-law and my husband as well. She insisted that my half-siblings should be invited as well, as finding bio family from both sides and inviting them. This is absolutely never going to happen for me. I did not invite them to my wedding and I have not seen or spoken to them in several years, but she's going extremely hard on the but family argument. Some background, I was an affair baby. My father cheated on his wife and I was the result. His wife kicked him to the curb and he and my mother stayed together. I was born and they did not take care of me and when I was three I was removed from their care by CPS. None of my biological family wanted me. My mother's family were supposedly good Christians who couldn't stand the thought of an illegitimate affair baby and my father's family were not in the position to take care of such a young child. My father's ex-wife ended up taking me. I'm not sure why. The fact that she was paid to take care of me was possibly the reason. What I do know is that I was not loved. My half-siblings ranged from 11 to 17 at the time, and they all hated me. It was made perfectly clear to me from a young age that I was never to call her mom, and I was never to call them my brothers and sisters. My father's family were still in their lives and knew how I was treated, and they wouldn't even report my case to a caseworker. I mentioned it once or twice, but I only think that she found it easier to dismiss a kid's words. My childhood was miserable, and I was seen as a burden and as someone who should never have been born. My half-siblings continued visiting their mom as adults, and they all just made it clear that they couldn't stand me and were disgusted by my presence. I just left when I was 16, and nobody ever reported me missing or came looking for me. My sister-in-law knows my background, and she knows that I would never want them in my life again. But she continues to push, and continues to do so, and I spoke to my mother-in-law, and she tried to take over, but sister-in-law insisted that she had offered first. When she bought it up again, I told her to cancel the shower, and that I would rather have no shower than one thrown by her where she can't respect my boundaries. Mother-in-law stepped in and is now hosting one, but sister-in-law is mad because she had spent a while planning this and had paid for some stuff already. Mother-in-law said that she would give her money back, but sister-in-law said that I was in the wrong and that I should have been appreciative of her wanting to give me back family. I told her that I had no family until I met them, and that she needs to accept that my blood relatives do not want me, and I do not want them. I know she keeps telling my husband how wrong I was, and he keeps defending me, but I feel bad about the tension now. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think, jerk or not the jerk? No, Opie's not being a jerk. It sounds like her bio family were horribly cruel people, and uh, she shouldn't have to have those people in her life just to make her sister-in-law feel better about like uniting family or something like that you know in life you're never going to please every single person right and i think this is one of those clear cases where you can do everything and there are just some people who aren't going to be happy about you and your sister-in-law is one of these people like she she is going to refuse to be happy with the choices and decisions that you've made and I think that this is, you just can't please her, right? You you uh, are in a position that she doesn't understand. She thinks that family is important, but she doesn't understand that you don't really have a family. These people didn't treat you like family. Well, that's the thing. And so often the people who are like, family is so important are people who have happy family lives and not people who have been, you know, neglected and belittled their entire lives by their family. Mm-hmm. And I think that she thinks in some twisted part of her mind that uniting you with this family is going to do you a huge favor and that you're going to be so much happier. Like some great Hallmark movie moment. Yeah. 
And I mean, that kind of stuff is sold in Hallmark movie moments, right? And I mean, that's the p appeal of having like the whole picture, I guess, it being picture perfect. But that's not what's going to make you happy. And, you know, I think explaining to your sister-in-law that you are a happy person, that you don't need to have this additional family to make you happy. Hopefully she'll understand that eventually and realize that she was wrong. Hopefully, but until then, it might be good to go low contact with her while she deals with this because you don't need this stress right now. Yeah. Well, let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, I'm a 28-year-old female and my fiancé is a 29-year-old male and he wants me to put his family before mine, even at the expense of my family's health. Throw away, as my work friends are on my main and they don't know what's going on. Also obligatory that this is on mobile, so grammar will be not so good. This is a long one, but I'll try to keep it as short as possible. And I also want to warn people that this does involve some medical procedures uh, around the eyes. I am a 28 year old female and I got engaged to my partner of seven years, R, a 29 year old male in May. Both sides of our family were really happy about this and we had a big family meal two weeks after getting engaged. His brother lives 250 miles away and couldn't get here for that meal, so we decided to have a meal for just his family late in June when his brother would be back for the weekend. This weekend was arranged long before we got engaged, so he wasn't back just for the meal. Earlier this year, my sister Kay, a 32-year-old female, got a serious eye infection and it quickly turned into an ulcer, which scarred some of her cornea and left her at a high risk of perforation. She needed a corneal graft, but her surgeon was away for four weeks, so she was going to have to wait until he got back to have it. However, her eye didn't hold and it perforated the day that I was supposed to be going to the family meal with R's brother. Kay's wife was at work and her phone was turned off and our mom was away with our stepdad. So when Kay called me to let me know what was happening, I knew that she would be at the hospital on her own. I immediately talked to my boss and he let me go early so Kay wasn't on her own. I texted R to let him know what was going on and he texted me back to send Kay his love and remind me about the meal that night. I ignored his comment about the meal as it was the last thing on my mind. Once I got to the hospital, I was taken back into a back room where Kay was to be greeted by three doctors and two nurses rushing around trying to help Kay. I was then informed that she would have to have an emergency operation to have her eye glued or else she would lose it. The problem was that they didn't have a surgeon at the hospital that could do it and she needed to go to another hospital an hour and a half away. They asked me if she would need transportation or if I could take her. I said that I would take her. Once we got to the other hospital, where we were told that she would be having the operation at 5.30 p.m., I knew then that I wouldn't make it to the dinner and texted R to let him know. He flipped out and basically told me to leave Kay at the hospital and have her wife pick her up after the operation was done. At this point, I still hadn't been able to get a hold of Kay's wife. I told him that that wasn't going to happen and that he was out of order to even ask me to do that. I then texted his mom and told her what was going on. She was really supportive and told me to stay with Kay and let her know how the operation goes. A dinner can be rescheduled. Kay's health can't. I also spoke with his brother, who was equally understanding. I stayed with Kay for her operation, and it was a success, and I got back home about 9 p.m. Her wife had ordered some Chinese and offered me some, which I happily accepted as I hadn't eaten since lunch. With that, I didn't get home until about 11 p.m., and R was already asleep. R was very short with me for days afterwards, and we ended up having a huge fight where he told me that I should have put his brother and family before K. He said that he was embarrassed going to the meal without me. I responded that I was embarrassed he thought that I would put a meal before my sister's health. This led to another week of awkwardness between us before we finally sat down and sorted things out, or so I thought. Eight weeks ago, Kay got her graft. So far, everything is going really well with it. On Saturday, his brother was here, so we went out to dinner with his family. His family were all asking about how Kay was doing, and I showed them a picture of the stitches in her eye. I thought that everything had gone really well until I got home, and he was really angry, saying that I shouldn't have brought up Kay's health issue, and that I shouldn't have shown them the picture. I argued that they had asked about her, and asked to see the picture. It ended up with him telling me that I needed to put his family before Kay, or else we weren't going to work. His family will come before mine once we are married, so I should get used to it. I went upstairs 
and I packed a bag. I'm now at my mom's house and he's been bombarding me with texts and calls ever since I left. I do love him, but I will never put his family above my own family's health. I feel like he's expecting me to spend every holiday with his family and put their wants above my family's needs, which won't happen. I'm very close to my sister and mom. That's not going to change, so I don't really know how to move forward or if I even want to. Has anyone experienced anything like this before? If so, how did you deal with it? Alright folks, what do you think? What kind of advice do we have for OP here? I mean, I think OP has handled the situation well. I mean, when you, someone's having a medical emergency, that prioritizes a dinner. Uh, that takes precedence over a dinner, you yeah. know? Um, and the way the fiancé is acting is completely unreasonable. You don't lose your family once you get married. And, like, I think you're right to step away from this relationship because I think he's shown you that every holiday is going to be with his family. If even medical emergencies, you're not yeah. supposed to go to yeah. a medical emergency for your family because there's a dinner for his family. He doesn't have any respect for your family. You're never going to get to see your family if you marry him without him throwing a giant temper tantrum. This is not the man you want to spend the rest of your life with. Well, and then on top of that, the only person who seemed to care was him. Mm -hmm. Right? All of his family were like, oh, yeah, we're really happy that you went and took care of your sister like that. Right? Yeah. And so I don't understand his reasoning here. I think that this is really controlling behavior. Yeah, it does feel very controlling to isolate someone from their family. And so it's really concerning to me that he would act like this. And I mean, as much as OP loves them, maybe they should reflect deeper on this relationship i mean i think the guy needs therapy at the very minimum right i think that he should seek out professional help because it seems like he has some kind of strange hang-ups and insecurities about this relationship yeah or just that he's in this really patriarchal mindset because there are people who believe well once you marry me you're now my property and my family is what you look who you look after like there's been a lot there have been a lot of patriarchal cultures throughout history that operate that way yeah and so I think that OP really should tread very, very cautiously from here. I think that this could end up in a bad position pretty quickly. So, I mean, my vote is on uh, not hanging, uh, not, uh, not continuing forward with this relationship. Yeah, I mean, he's shown you multiple times that he doesn't respect your family and he doesn't respect you. And I think you have to listen to what he's telling you. Yeah. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our last letter is titled Partner Embarrassed Me at Work event in the name of a joke. Oh, I love joke posts. Throw away because my partner uses Reddit. My partner and I went to a work event slash celebratory dinner last night for our company. We work for the same company at different locations. It was a bonus dinner for those who made 70% or more of our bonuses. And we were both invited since we achieved that goal. After the dinner, we and many of the other co-workers were hanging out in the courtyard of the hotel that our company puts us in. We walked up to a certain group and sat down. There was a person there, we'll call him Brad, who I've seen in passing and have never really met before. Earlier that day, I had expressed that I was excited to see and talk to Brad, as he's one of the only people I have yet to work with in the company. Now, I told my partner that I found Brad attractive as an aside, but not in a way that I think was creepy or perverted. All I said was, Brad is a handsome dude. We often will remark to each other if we find other people attractive and just leave it at that. Anyways, when we walked up to this group, Brad says to me, and you and I have never worked together. Hi, how are you? Yada yada. I proceeded to say, hi, my partner interrupts me and says, well, you should know that she thinks that you're one of the most attractive general managers in the company. I wanted to die. Not only was he there, but there was at least 10 other co-workers, including Brad's own girlfriend, who were all there for that. They all laughed it off, and I just tried to play nice and calm. But we went up to the room 20 minutes later, and my partner and I drunkenly passed out. I was quiet as we were getting ready to check out in the morning, and he asked me what was wrong. I asked him if he remember what he said, and he said no. I told him all of what I just said above, and he was like, that upset you? Jeez, I'm sorry, I was just trying to be funny. And I unloaded on him. I yelled and I cried, and I told him that I was mortified, that he was sloppy drunk, and it was not an excuse. That I told him that that information was with an assumption that it wouldn't be repeated to anyone else. It's now 12 hours later, and I just can't stop crying about it. 
He's remorseful and acknowledged what he did was wrong, but I'm fearful of the repercussions that it will have, as well as feeling like I'm on shaky ground about how to trust my partner. He's a comedic person, but it's not uncommon that he will say crass things in the name of a joke. This was so far beyond anything that he's ever said before. I do not think that I'm overreacting, but I just don't know what to do or how to repair the trust that's been violated by him. Edit, I forgot to mention that I struggle with mental health, specifically anxiety and depression, and it's been worse more recently. This is something that my partner knows and he contributed highly to my anxiety due to the stunt and I feel like I'm spiraling. All right, folks, what do you think? I just feel so bad for poor OP in this situation. I mean, what he said was uncalled for, and unfortunately, it could adversely impact your job. And part of me wonders, like, since they work at the same company, and there's, like, this was a dinner for people who earn 70% more of their bonuses, like, is there any jealousy involved? Like, yeah, yeah. Did OP earn maybe a little bit more of the, than him or something like that? Yeah. And, like... Su subtle subconscious thing yeah wild speculation maybe he is jealous and maybe he is trying to essentially sabotage his partner's uh job i mean and again that's just a speculation i have no idea i'm oh, yeah. just guessing but i can't you know think of any reason why someone and i i know he was drunk but you have to be responsible for your actions when you drink yeah well um, i mean i i think that that's a good uh reasonable like not, not i'm not i don't think that it's like an unreasonable thing to say right i think that it's a certainly a wild speculation because we don't of course have any evidence for it but i don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility and what other motivations would he have for saying this like you're out on a work event and again like if you are so drunk or intoxicated that you can't control what you're saying then maybe that's not a good place to be, right? Right. So, I mean, I understand why you are feeling like you're having a hard time trusting him. Um, and I think he's the one who needs to work on his behavior, not you. Like, you don't have to get over this. Uh, he needs to stop making these jokes. Uh, if drinking is a problem for him, then maybe he should reach out to someone who could help him with that. Like, if mm -hmm. he only says these things when he's drinking. But you have to remember, when people say things when they're drunk, it's still the same things they think on the inside when they're sober it's not like drinking changes who you are as a person a hundred percent or something like that well yeah i mean there's an old expression from the roman era of there's truth in wine right and you know people tend to be more honest i think when they're drinking and so that's tends to be i think one of those things and maybe he was just not thinking but right it could just because it does lower filters too so yeah. th he says some unfiltered things that yeah. he wouldn't say otherwise but again that's on him his responsibility to control that yeah and as for repair i think he needs to apologize one mm -hmm. and i mean he needs to talk to this general manager and explain the situation and say that i mean i don't know how you fix that other than to be like ha 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 never mention it again i don't know what you say to someone in that situation like oh i'm really sorry that i said this comment i know i made it awkward <laughs> yeah it's like how you say that without making it worse and uh, it, there may not be any way to come back from that because like yeah if you remind the colleague of it it's only going to make that fresher in his mind so mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to say or do about that because that's really not a great place to be for OP and it's not a great place for her partner to be in either. So, But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, it's tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here. And Amber, she has a jovial Bob Stein joke. What is a ghost's favorite book series? I can tell you exactly what a book, ghost's favorite book series is because not all ghosts are gonna have the same book series in common like some are really big fans of anna green gables you would be surprised and i mean that's that you might think oh well that's that's a bit of a an older book i wasn't expecting that well they're ghosts what do you expect some really like the victorian novels the penny the penny and dime ones penny right dreadfuls. Yeah, the penny dreadfuls uh those those I've talked to a few ghosts that have been like, I love the Penny Dreadfuls. Sheet Valley High. <laughs> I see. I see. That makes sense to some degree. And I have Mega Mint.
And today's costume, I think, I'm pretty sure Mary was the one who suggested this one. I think one. so, I think so. So thank you for the suggestion, Mary. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Friday, Junior. Happy Friday, Junior. Thanks to Amber for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Oh, and folks, before I forget, we have a live stream coming up tomorrow. Live scream. A live scream at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please, have it a saying on a party balloon. Family isn't about blood. It's about the people you love. You know, I think that's a good thing to say on a party balloon. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.